Hello and welcome. My name is Rob Miles um, and this is all about writing games with C Sharp and XNA. Probably your big chance to break into the games industry and become unbelievably rich and famous just like I am, only perhaps a bit different. Um, we're going to start off with a very simple session installing Visual Studio and XNA. These are the tools that are going to actually get you going in the business of writing games and uh, you could call this bit building a place to work because that's pretty much what we're going to do. Shouldn't take too long, shouldn't be too painful and won't cost you any money, which is always nice. Um, my name is Rob Miles. I work at University of Hull. Um, I teach computer science. I write a blog. I know lots of bad jokes. Um, what's brown and sticky? A stick. I think that proves it. And that's about it for me, really. Um, you'll learn more about me and uh, my strangeness as time goes by. Um, in terms of getting started, um, the first thing you have to do in this business, I have always found, is get yourself a nice place to work. Comfy chair, the biggest monitor you can find. An Xbox 360 if you've got one is great, or an Xbox gamepad if you haven't got the actual console itself, and if you're me, perhaps a box of licorice all sorts because that's what I like. If you like something different that's absolutely fine as well. Whatever you need to make yourself comfortable, um, get sat down, get comfortable and get going. Um, there's two things you need to write XNA games. Uh, there's two tools you have to have. Uh, one is called Visual Studio 2008 Express and the other is called XNA Game Studio 3.0. Both of these are free to download uh, you can get them off the interweb. They come down your broadband connection in an hour or so, maybe less, because they aren't enormous files. Um, there's a few hundred megabytes, that's it. So nothing much to download. Once you've got those, you're in business. Um, it only costs money if you want to do things like <coughs> run games on your Xbox 360. To do that, you have to have a thing called trial membership of the XNA Creators Club. If you want to sell your games, then that actually means you have to spend some money and get premium membership of the club. There are quite a few free offers and uh, there are quite a few ways that as a student you can get hold of free membership to run programs on your Xbox and there are competitions you can enter which can even get you premium membership. Worst case it'll cost you about £60 for a year's access to the Creators Club but that does mean you could write games, put them on the internet for anyone to download and even pay you money for. This is a great way to break into the business because it means that uh, you're putting stuff out there at pretty much zero cost to you. And if you want to show off and go into interviews and impress people that might be thinking about hiring aspiring young games programmers, this is a great way to get the word out. Really nice way to get started. Um, the two things we're going to look at, look at today are Visual Studio, which looks a little bit like the thing on the right you can see now. Um, and the other thing, the X and A bit. But for now, let's have a look at Studio. Um, you can write games with it or other stuff. There are lots and lots of versions of this. Professional people use the professional tools. We're going to use the free one, which is called Visual Studio 2008 Express Edition. Uh, the 2008 is very important. If you have an older one, you'll find it won't work with the tools that I want to use. So this is the one you have to use, but in a minute or two, I'll show you just where to find it on the web and just how to start the download. So don't worry about that. We'll find that it won't be a problem. This is basically a word processor for programs. You'll use it to write your code, run it, send it to the Xbox, run it on that and do all that good stuff. So that's the tool we're going to get to do that part of the job. Um, on top of that, we add a thing called XNA Game Studio 3.0. In case you're wondering about XNA, no one knows what it stands for. Uh, it's just called XNA and it's basically a whole bunch of tools that Microsoft have made and released that lets you write games. Um, the first game we're going to make will turn the screen blue, which ain't very impressive, but it is quite easy to do. So we'll do that. We'll have a blue screen by the end of this session and everyone will be so happy dancing in the streets, singing songs, drinking beer, you name it. Um, and so we need that as well. A second download and again I'll show you in a moment or two just how you get those. The other thing you have to have, this is kind of important because otherwise nothing else works, a PC 
running Windows XP or Vista or even Windows 7. I'm using Windows 7 just because I'm daft like that so my screens will look a bit different from the ones that you'll see but there's just a couple of things you have to find they're easy to spot and then once you've done that we're in business make sure you have the latest service packs I think for XP that's service pack 3 now and for Vista it's service pack 1 but that's all you need you can learn how to program you can write some good games you can play them you can show them to your friends you can send them to your friends PCs and they can use them there without buying anything that's all you need. If you want to use a gamepad, well, you can get one. Um, you can plug it in your PC into the USB socket or buy a little widget that makes it possible to use it through the, the wireless adapters you might already have with your Xbox. Um, and if you really have got an Xbox 360, you can put your games on that too. Points to bear in mind, you write the game once, it then runs on whatever platform you point it at. If you go to America and buy a Zoom music player, which you can buy in the States, that's a very small Microsoft iPod-like type thing. You can even run programs on that if you want to. But uh, in the UK, can't get those yet, so we have to stick with either the Xbox or the PC. But bottom line here, you can put these programs that you're going to write on either of those two boxes. For the PC, it costs you nothing. For the Xbox 360, you have to do this Creators Club thing, of which more a little bit later in the course. But for now, let's play with our PC Let's make a PC screen go blue. And to do that, the first thing we have to do is drop out of my slide deck and move this out of the way. Um, and I'm going to now go down onto the internet. So I'm going to fire up Explorer and it'll go and start up. And I'll just uh, drag my browser across so you can see it. Here we are. There's a nice shiny browser. Um, it's Internet Explorer 8 that I'm using, but you can use Firefox, you can use Safari, you can use anything you like. This should all just work. We're going to go to a couple of websites. The first one is, let's type this in very carefully, Rob, 3w.microsoft.com slash express. And you can see I've been here before slash download and I press return and there's a rattling noise and the internet leaps into life and I get this rather nice colorful screen there are loads of different Express versions of products quite a few we actually only want to use one of them which is down here if I scroll down my green friend Visual Studio 2008 Express Edition um, just click on the download button and the system will rattle and you will it'll say do you want to run and you will say yeah please run uh, it looks like you're getting the whole thing in 2.58 megs which is tiny that's smaller than one track of music and in an iPod or, or whatever an mp3 player um, in fact you're getting the first part of the loader once that's come down we get the second screen and at that point we can start doing the installation process. So dum ba dum ba dum ba dum rattle 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 rattle. Um, yes, I'll let you. I trust Microsoft. <laughs> oh yes, I do. So as far as I'm concerned, just move the microphone. It's falling off my head. I'm going to say yes, and then there'll be more rattling. Bum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum, -ba -dum. and there'll now be a setup just like any other setup you've ever seen. Um, it'll ask you if you want to do things and generally speaking you can say yes these things are going to come down off the internet so it'll take um, about half an hour or so if you have a reasonably fast broadband connection maybe a little bit longer um, I'm kind of cheating because I've already got this on my machine it's sitting on my hard drive I did this exercise a bit earlier I've been writing XNA for quite some time now and so here you go it says to me do you want to do a repair and I say no not really yours won't say that yours will say do you want to do an install and you will say yes keep pressing next until the world is happy with what you've got and at that point you have Visual Studio on your machine and you can write C-sharp programs of which more a bit later I am going to bail here I'm going to cancel because there's no point in me doing things and yes of course I'm sure that's why I pressed the button so as far as you're concerned let it run through. Yeah, okay. Moan, 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 moan. Um, as far as you're concerned, it will run through and you will now have Visual Studio on your machine. It isn't just for writing games. 
If you want to write other things, that's absolutely fine. You can write uh, a lot of good stuff, including Windows apps and all kinds of bits and pieces. The nice thing about what you're learning from me just right now is that you can use it to write word processors, web applications, database stuff, you name it. Any kind of big league proper program you can write as well as rather good games. So at this point you should have Visual Studio. It will be sitting on your system. You'll have to register it at some point. We'll cover how to do that a little bit later and maybe in the next session. But for now you've gone and got Studio. It's all downloaded. All's well with the world. The next thing we have to fetch is XNA. So back to your favorite browser, whichever it happens to be, and we're going to a different location. We're going to create... Oh, hello, Logots. Uh, <laughs> uh, Creators.xna.com um, and click on that. Now, this is the home page for the Creators Club. You can sign up for free. It costs you nothing. You get a like a, an introductory, a guest membership, which means you can post questions on the forums, take part in discussions, and download sample programs. Very neat, useful thing to do. You don't have to do it. You can run programs on your PC without joining anything. But if you want to, you can you can join that. No worries. What we want is XNA Game Studio 3. Here it is. Click on that link there. And there'll now be another page pop up if I scroll down to the bottom of this and click on there. It's a bit tortuous, this, but it gets you there in the end. Another window pops up, rattle, 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 um, which is taking a while to come down. Make sure you get version 3. No other version gives you that fully <laughs> full flavoured satisfaction for writing games. It has to be version 3. Click on download. And you're going to get the same old thing, and I'm going to say run, although in this particular case um, it's not a very sensible thing for me to do because I already have it. And as you can see, we've got 62 megs coming down, and it thinks on my broadband only take around 15 minutes or so to do that. So that's not a lot of time. It'll run through a setup procedure. Just keep on pressing yes. Go for all the default settings. And at the end of that, you will have XNA on your machine. I'm going to panic and cancel this because I don't need it. I've already got it. But you watch it through, get the download, and at that point you're in business. I'm clicking cancel because I'm already, I'm already in the room on this one. I'm in the zone. I'll close that window down. Once you've got those two things on your system, then you're in business. You can now write games. I'll push the browser out of the way. I'll go back here. Um, in terms of getting started, yep, you've got the tools. You could have followed along. I think that's the wrong slide. Oh, how terrible. Let's make a game that makes the screen go blue. So click on your start and go off and find all your programs. Uh, please, thank you very much. Now, I've got lots because I'm greedy, okay? I've got 2005, 2008, and all kinds of stuff. I've also got some other bits and pieces as well that you may or may not have. But one thing you should find in your programs is this thing here. Visual Studio C Sharp 2008 Express Edition. That's the first thing you loaded. And if you click on that from your programs menu, whatever it is, away you go. Now, it takes a while to run the first time. Uh, I have actually got some programs I've already written, which are all my recent projects. The first time you fire it up, you'll see nothing there because you won't have anything new at all. Um, but I can make myself a brand new sample project. Now, if I'm writing a document in Word or any other word processor, there's a command that says make me a new document. If you're using Visual Studio 2008, there's a command that says make me a new project. What projects are, we'll cover a bit later. For now, all you have to know is you want one. So click on here and go New Project, and there'll be more rattling. Now, again, a little bit more complication. There are lots of different kinds of games you can make. The one we want is a Windows game. It's the top left-hand corner. Get that selected, and then sort of write Blue Screen Game. Call it what you like, doesn't really matter. Don't put spaces in though, because that won't end well. So it's all one long word, just use letters, big and little ones like I've done. I'm putting all my stuff in a place called code on drive C. You can put yours where you like. If you want to browse somewhere else, that's fine. It's going to make a whole bunch of files and put them in a directory. So leave that box ticked. Just click OK. Your hard drive will rattle for a while. Stuff will happen. 
and eventually, here you go, yours might not look exactly like mine, <laughs> there's a joke there somewhere, uh, but you should see a window here with a whole bunch of text that we don't really want to look at at the moment in too much detail. Another window here with like a little tree, little map, and then some other windows which will make a lot more sense next time we take a look at, we're gonna, at what we're going to do with them. Okay, so um, press the play button. Play is what you press to start watching a movie or listening to music. In the case of Visual Studio, it's what you press when you want to start a program running. So I'm going to press this button now and start debugging the game I've just written. The system will build it and I get my blue screen. Isn't that lovely? It's all blue and everything. Now, I can stop it by doing what you would with an MP3 player by pressing the stop button, which is here. So I press stop and it stops. And that is how you use Visual Studio 2008 Express Edition and XNA Game Studio 3 to make a blue screen. At this point, I'm going to drop back to the presentation, which is just in here. You can follow along if you like. I hope you did. Feel free to pause me, run me backwards and all that kind of thing. I don't really mind. Uh, <laughs> not sure what the clip are, but you can't have everything. Um, quick recap. These are the addresses for Visual Studio 2008 Express and XNA. Um, when you get those down, run 2008 from your programs menu, make a new project, run it, and admire the blue screen, and then press the square to stop it. Then just close the program. Next time, we're going to make a program that will make any color you like, any possible color. If you can imagine it, if you can think of the numbers, you can have it on your screen. But that's next time. Bye.